Warhammer 40k Inquisitor's fourth season is coming, this time it is the season of Empyrean Echoes. The main mechanic here is the body count bar, which fills up for every strong enemy that you kill. 1 point for champions, 3 for commanders, 5 for villains, and 10 for elites. All of those enemy types have a base 25% chance to spawn as a revenant version with higher stats and counts for double points. The body count bar fills up to 250, which then an Empyrean Elite will spawn, a new type of gigantic boss enemy that'll drop new rewards, like an Empyrean Key that can be used to open an extra chest in your next Void Crusade, and some Empyrean Silver that can be traded into Regna for Empyrean Stashes, loot boxes similar to normal ones she sells except with a 100% chance to get 1-3 to three of the new Empyrean Archaeotech Relics. Killstreak mechanics got a small rework. They now give a base damage and XP bonus for 10 seconds, with several different tiers, and most of the new Empyrean Archaeotech relics added this season will interact with these killstreak bonuses. A few examples are the Redeemer Shotgun that gives burst shot extra damage while you have a killstreak active, the Redemption Inoculator will trigger the Inoculator for free on every killstreak, and the Deathbringer Neural Implant will double the duration of all killstreak effects. Deathbringer can actually only be dropped with a very low chance from an Empyrean Elite itself, then a low chance from one of the Empyrean Stashes. So it looks like this item is going to be pretty rare and sought after. Another big mechanic for this season are Empyrean Echo Spells, a collection of spells that have a chance to be cast whenever you kill an enemy that increases that body count bar. There are three tiers of spells. The first tier has some simple stuff like Chain Lightning and Warp Flex Bonding. Tier 2 has a bunch of powerful buffs like invulnerability for 5 seconds, 100% damage bonus for 60 seconds, and then tier 3 has some powerful spells like summoning an Astartes Marine, 400% damage and 50% movement speed for 30 seconds, and then just straight up instantly killing all nearby enemies. It seems that the chance of a tier 3 echo spell increases with the amount the body count bar goes up with one single kill, so killing more powerful enemies will activate more powerful spells, especially if they happen to spawn as a revenant that will give you double the points. With a new season comes a new type of Archaeotech Shard that you can put into your items and a seasonal shrine. Like usual, each tier of the Shard is unlocked through completing the season's challenges, becoming available in the court drop pool once unlocked but also has a very high chance of coming out of the new Empyrean stashes. When socketed into your armor, you'll get damage reduction against elites. In your weapon, you'll get a damage bonus against elites, both of those applying to the new Empyrean elites. And then in your other slots, you're going to increase to drop the loot quality, meaning more high tier items with more enchantments. The new seasonal shrine is a pretty simple gamble, with a chance to either drop some loot and give you a damaging aura buff, or spawn a revenant commander for you to fight. There are some other reworks that come with this patch as well, like the Unholy Cathedral now giving 10 minutes to fight off 10 waves, with leaderboards for how fast people can complete it, which is very welcome, because the old version was just an endurance test that went on for way too long. Purge missions also got an update, now you'll get a stacking buff that increases your damage and speed as you kill things, and then enemies have a chance to explode on death, and their aggro radius will increase as you progress so it'll be a lot less likely for you to miss a few along the way than have to backtrack. I'm happy that Purge, one of the worst mission types, got some love, but I still can't help but wonder why Data Hunt and those Capture People Alive missions were left untouched, because I personally think that those were much worse than Purge. But other than that, I do really like this season. It feels like a combination of the best parts from the previous three seasons. The new Purge Carnage feels like Inferno, the Empyrean spells feel like the Warp Surge spells, which I'm really happy to see come back because that's probably the most fun that I've ever had in this game. And then the new Empyrean Elites feel like the big boss fights that I had so much fun with in the Void Brethren season. So thanks for watching this video. I should have it up by the day of the season release, so hopefully it's able to help anyone who is starting this season. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play the first day, I have some family stuff to deal with and then I work for the rest of the day, but the day after I'll probably be playing a lot and then streaming on YouTube here and also on my Twitch channel with the same name. I think I'm going to start with a Heavy Flamer Crusader because that's just easy and simple. I've been pretty busy lately so I might not have a build guide out for a while, but I will put some of my latest build guides that I think will work well in the description. But you will have to make your own decisions when it comes to switching out the seasonal items that I tend to use. Another channel, Cheezer, that I'll also put in the description has been putting out a lot of build guides. Most of them don't use seasonal items, so they should work in the new season. Hopefully the balance changes don't mess with the old builds too much, but if you are looking for some build guides I would definitely check him out. So once again, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the season.
And also thank you to my members for supporting the channel, Mr. Fat Cat and Gunner Granzen.